Okay, I wanted to finish up section 7.1 here. We're talking about the inverse trig functions. I had one over this sheet here uh, with the graphs of the inverse trig functions. Um, and the, the uh, domain and the range are, are also provided there. Uh, of course, I'm getting an inverse by just simply switching x and y. And, uh, you know, if I know the graphs of the original six trig functions, which I should know at this point, um, I'm just simply reflecting each one of those about the diagonal line y equal x to get the graph of the inverse, okay? Um, now, the bulk of the calculations are going to be where they'll want you to find exact values. Um, I, I strongly emphasized in Chapter 6 and also in Chapter 7 here, I would, I would continue that. When you're doing the calculations, try to not use a calculator, okay? Um, these, are, these are things that um, I, ideally we, we want to be getting good with. Um, in calculus, they're going to want you to know this. Okay? They're, they're not going to want you to run to a calculator every time you've got to do it, some trig thing. If you're doing that, you're going to struggle in calculus, I promise you. Okay? Um, it, is, it is critical that you, you know the, the triangles, uh, you know the graphs, and you know how to solve basic equations. We'll be looking at equations coming up here um, soon, but uh, uh, in, in in a later section. But uh, so it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, um, I, I I also hope that when you took trig, you know your trig instructor emphasized doing calculations by hand and not having to run to a calculator all the time. Okay, now they do have some calculator things kind of mixed in here and there. So. Um, in uh, this example, I want us to approximate values by using our calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in radian mode, okay? Otherwise, the answers are not going to be what you're getting here. And so, uh, uh, let me just show you uh, how to do these. Okay, so I'll turn the calculator on. I'm, I'm already in radian mode. I've, I've checked that before. Um, and uh, if I hit, like, second, sine, it'll set me up with the sine inverse function. I want to find sine inverse of root 3 divided by 5. And I'm getting 0.35 if I go nearest two digits on that. Okay. Um, if I compute cosine inverse of negative 0.44, that was the next one there, uh, hit enter. Okay, I'm getting roughly 2.03 if I go nearest two digits on that. Tangent inverse of negative 3. Uh, negative 1.25 if we go nearest two digits. They'll tell you where to round, of course, on my math lab. Um, but... Uh, all right, now the next thing I want to look at is uh, some inverse properties. Now, back in um, the algebra part of the course, when we looked at inverse functions, uh, you, you can know if two functions are inverses of each other if you plug each one into the other and you get plain old x. f of f inverse of x is x, and f inverse of f of x is, f, is x. Okay, now sine x and sine inverse of x are inverses of each other. So if I plug each one into the other, I'm going to get x. Sine inverse of sine of x is x. Now I've stated that this is going to be for x values that are ranging between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Um, x is the output from the sine inverse function here, and we know that the output from the sine inverse function is going to be values that are ranging between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so that's where I'm getting that from. Uh, sine of sine inverse of x is x. Um, and this is for x being a value between negative 1 and 1. Now, I know that the sine curve oscillates between 1 and negative 1, so any calculation coming out of the sine function is never going to be outside of these boundaries, uh, negative 1 to 1. Okay, so really I'm just simply stating the range of either the sine inverse uh, function or the sine function there. Cosine inverse of cosine x is x. Cosine of cosine inverse of x is x. Uh, the first one, okay, so cosine inverse of cosine x, that's x. For when x is ranging from 0 to pi, that's the range of the cosine inverse curve is where I'm getting that. 
um, cosine of cosine inverse of x is x um, for x ranging between negative 1 and 1. The cosine curve oscillates between 1 and negative 1, so any calculation coming out of the cosine function is never going to be outside of these boundaries here. Okay, and then uh, tangent x and tangent inverse of x are also inverses of each other, so when you plug each one into the other, you're going to get x. Um, tangent inverse of tangent x is x. Uh, for when x is ranging from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that is the range of the tangent inverse function. Okay, and um, tangent of tangent inverse of x is x for when x is any real number. Uh, if you look at the graph of the original, uh, they just, you know, y equal tangent x, um, the, uh, the uh, graph is going to cover the entire real number line on the y-axis. So again, I'm just simply stating the range of that function there for, for the, uh, uh, the uh, that is the tangent function. Okay, and uh, let's use this information to find some values. So like if I want to find sine inverse of sine of pi over 2, uh, well, that's going to be pi over 2 because pi over, uh, excuse me, pi over 12 uh, is uh, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, so that's just a go right to the answer type deal, right? Okay, now I can't do that here, though, for part B. Sine inverse of sine of 2 pi over 3 is not 2 pi over 3. Some students will make that mistake because they, they think that it is just x, okay, and they see x is 2 pi over 3, but... Uh, in this problem here, 2 pi over 3 is not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so more work is going to be required here. Now, sine of 2 pi over 3. Well, 2 pi over 3 would be an angle in quadrant 2, and I'd be working with a uh, 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay, it'd be a 60 degree angle, but in quadrant 2. So opposite the uh, 60 would be root 3. And the uh, opposite the, or excuse me, the um, uh, hypotenuse would be two. The adjacent side would be um, would be uh, a, a negative one. Okay, which uh, which isn't going to be needed here in this problem. Okay, uh, but uh, so sine of two pi over three would be root three over two. Okay, when I build that triangle. So now I need to find sine inverse of root three over two. Well, sine inverse of root 3 over 2, if I call that y, means that sine of y would be equal to root 3 over 2, okay? Now, y has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So both these are positive, right, which means I'm, I'm going to be in quadrant 1, but uh, um, sine of what angle would give you root 3 over 2? Well, if the opposite side is root 3 and the hypotenuse is 2, then the adjacent side is going to be 1. You're working with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but it's in quadrant 1. And more specifically, that would be a 60 degree angle if root 3 is opposite the 60. Um, pi over 3 would be the answer. Okay. Pi over 3, of course, is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, part C, cosine of cosine inverse of negative 0.4. Uh, well, that's going to be negative 0.4 because of the conditions on x here. Negative 0.4 is between negative 1 and 1, so that's going to you know, just go right to the answer type, type deal. Part D, uh, cosine inverse of cosine of 3 pi over 2. Okay. Um, so cosine inverse of cosine of x is x, but only if x is between 0 and pi. 3 pi over 2 is not between 0 and pi. So I wouldn't want to say 3 pi over 2. Okay, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Uh, so I just need to find cosine inverse of 0. Well, if I call that y, y equal cosine inverse of 0 means that cosine of y is equal to 0. So cosine of what angle would give me 0 is the question. Uh, also, that angle has to be in the interval 0 to pi since that's the range of the cosine inverse curve. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so cosine inverse of 0 would be pi over 2.
pi over 2 would be my answer. Okay, part E is the last one. Tangent inverse of tangent of negative 2 pi over 3. Tangent inverse of tangent x is x under these conditions. Ne negative 2 pi over 3 is not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so I, I wouldn't want to just say it's negative 2 pi over 3. Um, but tangent of negative 2 pi over 3, well, let's see, negative 2 pi over 3 would be in quadrant 3. And I would have a 60 degree angle in quadrant 3. Opposite the 60 would be negative root 3, since I'm in quadrant 3. The adjacent side would be a negative 1. And the hypotenuse would be 2. Okay, so tangent of negative 2 pi over 3 would be negative root 3 over negative 1, or that would be root 3, right? Negative over negative is positive. Now, I'd want to look at this as negative over negative is positive because um, I need to find tangent inverse of root 3. And um, let's see here, tangent... Uh, if, if I call that y, y equal tangent inverse of root 3 means that tangent of y equals root 3. Uh, so the conditions on the tangent inverse function are that y has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I know that when I draw that triangle, it's going to be either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. You see, if I left it in terms of negative over negative, I'm still in quadrant 3, and I, I, I don't want to be in quadrant 3. I need to be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. Well, root 3, that's the same as root 3 over 1. Both those are positive, so I know I'm going to be in quadrant four, uh, quadrant 1. excuse me. Um, tangent of what angle would give you root 3 over 1? Well, uh, if the opposite side is root 3 and the adjacent side is 1, you'd be talking about a 60-degree angle. Of course, the hypotenuse would be 2 and a 60 degree angle and radian measure would be pi over 3. So tangent of pi over 3 is root 3 over 1. Therefore, tangent inverse of root 3 would be pi over 3. Okay. Also, pi over 3, of course, is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, so notice how I'm, I'm, I'm referring to this uh, sheet a lot here. Uh, specifically to get the range of whatever the inverse trig function is that we're that we're dealing with. Okay, so you want to keep this sheet handy. Um, like I said, you'll you'll be referring to it there. Okay, and uh, we're done with section seven one. Here's the homework problems on page four sixty three.